Chickies, we are taking our trip through the Bible. Last time we talked about creation days 3 and 4. Today we will talk about days 5 and 6. Before we start, let's review just a little bit. On day 1, God made time, space, matter, and light. And very importantly, he separated the light from the darkness to prepare the way for which day? That's right, day four, because on day four, God made the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night and the stars to twinkle for our delight. That's right, that's right, you remembered. Now on day two, God separated the waters above from the waters below with a sky in the middle where the birds are to go. So we see that God prepared the way for day five because he created fish to swim in the waters or the oceans, the rivers and the lakes below and birds to fly in the sky above. Let's have a look at Mr. Griggs' article on day five. Mr. Grigg does an excellent job of explaining creation, and you can find his articles on creation.com under the kids section, and they are free. Wow, thank you, Mr. Grigg. On the fifth day of creation week, the earth was ready for God's animals to live there. God had made water, soil, air, and plants and fruits for food. He also had already created the sun to give light and warmth. Now, on the fifth day, God created Earth's first inhabitants. What's an inhabitant? An inhabitant is a person or an animal that lives in a place. In this place, Earth, God made the animals that live in the sea and the ones that fly in the air. Once again, God simply commanded them all to come into being, and they did. So when God spoke, the sea was suddenly teeming with every kind of creature that lives there. Tiny ones called krill, small fish like sardines, medium-sized like salmon, bigger fish such as marlin or swordfish, and even much larger ones like the whales. God also made jellyfish and eels, corals, crabs, octopuses, and porpoises, and all others, too. Some people say that whales evolved from an animal like a cow, or from some other land animal that decided it wanted to start living in the sea and eating seaweed or other sea creatures instead of grass. But why would it do that? We don't have any convincing evidence for that idea. Well, what is evidence? Evidence is true facts that helps us to know if our ideas are correct. And God also tells us that he did not make the land animals until day six. So cows were not made on day five. Well, here's an interesting fact. Did you know that most fish don't eat each other, but eat underwater plant things like seaweed or algae, which is like green rock slime, and drifting tiny plants called plankton? I did not know that until I read Mr. Griggs' article. Well, on this same day, day five, along with the animals in the sea, God also commanded flying creatures for the air, meaning birds like parrots, pigeons, and even poultry like chickens, flying insects like butterflies, bees, and bugs, and even bats, and the flying reptiles that we call the pterosaurs. What a marvelous sight it must have been. What a marvelous sound there must have been when the birds began to sing. God made these creatures with four different types of wings. Birds' wings are made of feathers. Insects' wings are made of thin scales. Bats' wings are made of skin stretched over a long arm and hand bones. And the pterosaur's wings are skin that's stretched over a long fourth finger bone. 
Flight feathers are remarkable features, a remarkable creation. When a bird raises its wing, the feathers move apart to let the air through so the birds can more easily move through the air. But when they pull their wings back down, the feathers close completely and that helps them to push the air down and push themselves up. Try that for just a moment. Spread your arms out like you're a bird. Now open your fingers and spread them apart. Wave them through the air when you're going up and see if the air flows quickly and easily through your fingers. Now on the way back down, close your fingers together and push down. That push is what pushes the air down and helps the birds to move up. What else is wonderful is the birds can change the shape of its wings to help it take off, flap, glide, and land. Now who do you think designed these wings so perfectly for our flying creatures? God, of course! There are some evolutionists that might say a reptile's scales slowly changed into feathers. But there are no fossils that show any reptiles slowly changing from scales to feathers. There's no evidence for that idea. Now I'm going to talk some more about the dinosaurs here in day five. Mr. Grigg and many other scientists believe that dinosaurs were created on day six because they are animals that make their homes on the land. However, other scientists believe some dinosaurs could fly and swim. So they say that those dinosaurs that were made to fly and swim were made on day five and the others were made on day six. So we will just say some of them may have been on may, may have been made on day five. So we will just say some of them may have been made on day five, but I am going to talk about them here because we have a lot to talk about on day six. The word dinosaur is not in the Bible because the word was not invented until 165 years ago. That may seem like a long time, but it's not that long if you consider that we have about 6,000 years since the earth was made. Well, a dinosaur-like animal called behemoth is described in Job chapter 40, and then another one called Leviathan is described in Job chapter 41. The Hebrew words that are translated dragon appear in the Old Testament over 30 times. Now, some versions of the Bible, like the NIV, will use the word monster. And from the Bible, we can see that man and dinosaurs once lived together. We can see them from these descriptions of the Leviathan and the behemoth and the monster descriptions. Dinosaurs did not evolve into birds or other animals. God did not use evolution to create the animals or the earth over millions of years. We know that God spoke and the earth was made and he made the earth and everything in it in seven days. Well, if you think, hmm, if animals made themselves from other animals over long periods of time, then we should find millions and millions of fossils of halfway animals, meaning a dinosaur that's slowly changing into a bird, we should see a fossil of a part dinosaur and a part bird, or a part ape and a part human, but we don't have any fossils of those. There are no halfway animal fossils. We only have fossils of dinosaurs or birds, apes or humans. So if evolution are true, if evolution was true, then where are all the halfway fossils?
There aren't any, because evolution is not true. The Bible is true. Well, God's ability to create such a wonderful and perfect earth in such a short period of time, the seven days, really shows his mighty power and his perfect ways. You see, God brought dinosaurs into existence about 6,000 years ago with the other animals that he made. Before Adam and Eve disobeyed God, earth was a perfect place, and all of God's animals ate plants. None of the animals ate other animals, because there was no sin and there was no death. But after Adam and Eve disobeyed God, sin entered the world, and along with sin came fear and death. The animals became afraid of us, and they became afraid of other animals, and animals began to eat other animals. It was then that the earth began to fill up with hate. And so much hate began to fill up the earth that God decided he needed to wash away the hate with a flood that covered the whole earth and all of the mountains. God brought two of every kind of animal, of land creature, and seven of some of the kinds onto Noah's Ark. You may have guessed I was talking about Noah's Ark already. And yes, dinosaurs were included on the Ark. During the flood, there was a whole bunch of water, mud, and minerals mixed together and fossilized many of the creatures that were not on board of the ark. This is why we find fossils of shells and sea creatures on tops of the mountains. How else would sea creatures be on top of the mountains unless there was a great flood? Well, after the flood, the people, the dinosaurs, and the rest of the animals left the ark and began to refill the earth. But some of the animals had a hard time adjusting to the new climate. Wait, what is the climate? The climate is what the weather is usually like in a certain place. So in the United States, the climate is warm usually during the months of June and July. But after the flood, the world became much colder. And this is when an ice age started. And there wasn't as much food because the flood had wiped out a lot of the earth and all that was in it. And now God said that people were now allowed to eat animals. This is after the flood. He told Noah and his family that they could now eat animals. So people used animals for food and clothing and weapons and other things. And it was because of all of this, the cold weather, not as much food, people hunting animals, that some of the animals became extinct. What does extinct mean? For animals, extinct means that there are not any more of those kinds of animals on the earth. That means that all of that type of animal died. And yes, that is a bit sad. Well, the dinosaurs slowly died over the years after the flood. Remember, the dinosaurs were still living after the flood because Noah brought them on the ark. And the only thing that was left of the dinosaurs was their bones and some stories. What type of stories? Well, many of our old stories from places to England all the way across the world to places like China have stories about these big dragons or monsters that look like dragons. And as the people told stories to other people or to their children or to their grandchildren, well, little bits of the stories changed and they turned into legends. What is a legend? A legend is a story where some parts might be true and some parts might not be true. And we're not really sure which parts are true and which parts aren't. 
But what's important is that many people all over the earth have these legends of dragons or monsters that look like dragons. And what that tells us is that they are telling stories of the dinosaurs that used to live on the earth. Now, it wasn't until much later, about 200 years ago, I guess, that we started using the word dinosaur. The word dinosaur means terrible lizard. And it was Sir Richard Owens who first started using this word when people started finding dinosaur fossils in the earth. People thought they were discovering dinosaurs for the first time, but they were actually rediscovering them. Adam was the first person to discover dinosaurs because God brought all of the animals to Adam so Adam could name them. So dinosaur isn't really their name. I guess we will have to wait until we get to heaven to find out what the original name was that Adam gave, or it might have been something along the lines of behemoth or leviathan that we find in the Bible. We're not really sure. It's a mystery, but God does like mysteries. Now, those people who don't believe that the Bible is true have created a different history of the dinosaurs. And this history is wrong because it doesn't agree with God's word. We always want to check what our facts are according to God's word. If it doesn't agree with God's word, then it's not true. So we must be very careful when we go to museums or read books about dinosaurs. We must ask ourselves, does this information agree with God's word? Just because someone wrote something down and put it on a wall or put it in a book, that doesn't make it true. It's true if it agrees with God's word. Now, let's take a look at the sixth day of creation and see what Mr. Grigg has to say about that. Well, on the sixth day of creation week, God made all the animals that live on the land. And he simply commanded the earth to bring forth the land animals, and it did so. Well, God made animals of special use. Well, what does that mean? Animals of special use are like cows, sheep, and horses because they help us with our everyday lives. A cow's special use might be that the cow gives us milk and sheep give us wool for clothes. Horses help us with work and they also are a means of transportation. That means they can take us from one place to another. We can ride on a horse's back. Now, God also made small animals like squirrels, spiders, rabbits, mice, frogs, lizards, and he also made beasts like apes and elephants and all of the different kinds of dinosaurs. All of these animals appeared immediately at God's command and all lived peacefully together. What a sight it must have been. Did these animals struggle to evolve over millions of years? Well, if you've been listening, then you know that the answer is no. The Bible tells us that God made each animal after its kind. After its kind. That means that God gave each animal the power to make baby animals just like itself. The birds reproduce to make baby birds, and fish reproduce to make baby fish. Hmm, but one kind could not change into a different kind. So rabbits may reproduce baby rabbits, but not baby kangaroos. And when dinosaurs laid their eggs, baby dinosaurs came out of the eggs, not baby birds. Birds cannot reproduce and make baby alligators, and fish eggs will not hatch and produce a dog. No, 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 that's silly. And the same is true for every other animal. But evolutionists believe that one kind of animal slowly changed into another. 
In fact, evolutionists believe that the animal changed into another kind of animal all by itself. But if that's true, then why aren't monkeys changing into humans right now? Why aren't the apes changing into humans right now? And if they did it by themselves, then why can't we change ourselves into something else? The answer is God made us exactly the way he wanted us to be because he has a special job for every one of us. Now, let's not forget what else God made on day six. Well, what else did he make? It's us, yes. After God made the earth and after he made everything in it, the water, the land, the sky, the sun, the moon, all the plants and animals, now the earth was ready to be the home of God's greatest creation, the first human beings, Adam and Eve. And remember that God said, he made us in his image. God said, let us make man in our image. Who could he have been talking to? He wasn't talking to the angels as we are not made in the image of the angels. And he wasn't talking to any of the animals like the apes because we are not made in their image either. God was talking to himself. It was a conversation, a chat among three persons of the Trinity, our Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. It's interesting to know that the Hebrew word for God in Genesis means more than one person. Why did God make sure to say that we are made in his image? Because God wanted to be sure that we know that we are special and he loves us. We are absolutely different than the animals, and we have something of the nature of God in us. We are like God in many ways, and unlike the animals in many ways. Well, let's see. John 4, 24 says, God is spirit. So unlike the animals, you have an eternal and immortal spirit. That means the spirit goes on forever. And you can be filled with God's Holy Spirit and you can pray to God directly. 1 John 4, 8 says that God is love. So you can love and worship God. You can love other people and you can know God's love for you. Animals cannot do this. In Psalm 34, 8 and in 1 Peter 2, 3, the Lord says, God is good. God is holy and perfect. And this means he never does anything that is wrong. And he commands us to be holy and perfect also. Unlike the animals, people have a conscience. It's something that tells us what is right and what is wrong. It's like when you are doing something you know you shouldn't be doing and you can just feel something inside of you say, oh, don't do that. That's your conscience. We are different from the animals in many other ways too. We can talk with other people and talk with the Lord. Animals can signal warnings. They can show aggression or friendship with sounds that they make. And by the way they stand or move, maybe their facial expressions, sometimes even by odors. But animals cannot speak and they cannot write a true language. We can choose what we want to do, but animals do things by instinct. And you can see that in Jude verse 10. We can also comfort others when they are sorrowful and when they are laughing, we can rejoice when they laugh. Now one animal may help another, but they are not able to create and run hospitals to heal each other or to care for each other the way that we are able to do that. We can cook our meals, we use fire and electricity, but animals are scared of fire. 
We can cultivate our fields. We can plant and reap crops. We can invent complex things like computer games, musical instruments. We can do paintings, math. We can invent aircrafts. We even use clocks to measure time. Now, animals may make nests or burrows, but this is the limit of their creativity. We are very creative beyond anything an animal can do. And God knew that the time would come when God the Son would become a man and live on the earth in the person of Jesus Christ. And he gave the first man, Adam, the sort of body in which the Lord Jesus Christ would one day appear. Now, to make the first woman, God did something very special. He caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep. Then he took one of Adam's ribs, and with great wisdom and skill, he built a lovely lady who was to be Adam's helper and wife. Now don't worry, God knew what he was doing in removing a rib from Adam. This is the only bone in our body that will grow back if it's removed. And their children were not affected. What does that mean? That means that today, men and women have the same number of ribs. God knew what he was doing. When God brought Eve to Adam, Adam named her Eve. And Eve means life because Eve would become the mother of the whole human race. That means that she's the great, great, great grandmother of every single person, even you. God blessed Adam and Eve and told them to have many children and to fill the earth. So it was God who designed marriage, the marriage of a man and a woman. And he designed the family. He did this way back in Genesis. God also told Adam and Eve to be good stewards of the earth. God wanted people who had been made in his image to care for the earth and everything in it on his behalf. That means to care for it as he would care for it. Now we were meant to find out all about the earth and find out how to help people and animals in a way that is pleasing to God. God made the Garden of Eden to be Adam and Eve's home. Remember, the Garden of Eden gives us a picture of God's presence. So their home was to be right with God. Now, what did they eat in the garden? God told Adam they were free to eat from any tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Their food would never run out because God had made the plants and the trees to keep on reproducing through their seeds. God said, the animals should also get their food from every green plant. So God said in the beginning that neither man nor the animals should eat meat. It was only after the flood in Noah's time that God told man that he could eat meat. And remember that this was after sin. So before sin, we were not eating meat and the animals were not eating meat either because there was no death. Now, everything on day six was beautiful and perfect for God's purpose. There was no struggle, no disease, no suffering, no sin, and of course, no death. During creation week, God looked at what he had made and he called it good. Six times he called it good. And on the sixth day with everything finished, God looked at it again and joyfully said, it is very good. Well, that was a lot of very helpful information. Thank you so much, Mr. Grigg. That is where we will stop today. Today we have looked at days five and six of creation. Now let's remember, day two prepared the way for day five. God separated the waters above from the waters below with the sky in the middle where the birds are to go. And day three, God prepared the way for day six. Land, grass, and plants made for the animals and man. 
Well, next time we will explore how God made us. I hope you have enjoyed our talk. I know I have. Now, as you go, I pray that you walk in the truth of God's word. Let's talk again soon.